All right, so now what we have here is the 3D Christmas tree project from the Pie Hut. And this is a great buy for your friends who love soldering, if you have any of those. And so I want to show you a little bit today how it works, how to put it together, cool things you can do with it uh, to make it all blinky. And when we're done, we'll be able to connect this to a Raspberry Pi 3 computer or a Raspberry Pi Zero. Now there are two versions of the kit. This is the soldering kit, which I think is more fun. There's also a version that comes pre-soldered if you just want to pop it on your Pi. Maybe you don't have a soldering iron or are lazy or uh, whatever. So um, let's see what's in the bag. All right, now we have the uh, printed circuit board itself here. It's in a couple different pieces that will snap out. And then there's a bag of components. What we have here are some resistors, 120 ohm, and these will be soldered. We have some LEDs. It looks like one of them might have gotten broken in the bag from the uh, UK. That's too bad. But no worries, I have some spare LEDs lying around. Hopefully it doesn't happen to yours. We also have some headers. Now this will allow you to mount it to your Pi. And this other one breaks away and allows the two pieces, or three pieces rather, of the Christmas tree to come together. So things you'll need for this project. You'll need a soldering iron and some solder. A pair of helping hands is always helpful. These guys are about five bucks, so I recommend picking one up if you don't have it. And you'll need some kind of cutters for clipping off the excess leads. So there are some step-by-step -step instructions from the Pi Hut, and I've linked to that in the video description. So uh, this is an assembly video, but more of a video to show you how, it's, how it works and um, why it's cool and why you might want to consider picking one of these up. It is close to Christmas already, but I think it's worth it. Now as far as the printed circuit board itself, the quality is really good here. Uh, it has a nice to and from label. Merry Christmas, although this part does get discarded. And then all the pieces will kind of break away when we're done and make it easier to assemble. Now the first thing we're going to do is detach all of our resistors. You can just pull them right out of the paper here. Uh, don't stab yourself like I just did. Uh, it is possible to unpeel this paper and pull it apart, but um, I've never had much luck with that. So I'm just going to pull them out individually. Try not to bend them too much, although we are about to bend them anyways. Now unlike the LEDs, polarity doesn't matter here, so it doesn't matter what direction they go. But what is important, apparently, is that header remains on top here. So we're gonna bend each leg, stick them through, and uh, solder them up. You can also use a tool to bend these, but for this application it doesn't really matter, so I just kinda do it with my fingers. Well, that was tedious, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, stick them on in again. Polarity doesn't matter, doesn't matter the direction, but you might want to face them the right way if you care about craftsmanship and you want all your lines of colors to match up, although honestly, it really doesn't matter. All right, when soldering surface mount components like resistors, I recommend flipping it over and then bending the legs out just slightly. This will hold it in place while we solder it. Just need to bend it a little bit outward, not too much, because you don't want it to go over and short against anything once you've soldered it. It helps if you don't have massive hands. Okay, time for our helping hands to help us. Now, if you haven't done a lot of soldering, that's okay. Soldering's not that hard. Essentially, you want to make sure you have the right tip. Keep your tip tinned, which means covered in uh, solder so it doesn't get oxidized. Then you want to touch both the hole that you're mounting to and the component lead. And then you want to apply the solder to the component lead. You don't want to apply the solder directly to the tip because the, the flux, if you have a flux core solder, it will, uh, or rosin core solder, then it'll actually uh, evaporate immediately and it'll make it harder to stick. This is a bit of a difficult angle when with the camera in the way. And I'm, here's a disclaimer, I'm definitely not a soldering professional, so uh, if you want to critique my methods, it's fine. All right, so to make things easier, now that I've done this side, I'm gonna go ahead and clip everything off. Just wanna check your solder connections, make sure they're good. Then use a good pair of clippers to clip off the le excess leads. I 
Alright, so this will make it much easier to solder the other ones. That looks pretty good. Not perfect, but that's okay. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and solder our LEDs. Now it does matter which direction you solder these. Now the short leg of the LED is called the cathode, and that's also the, known as negative. And we want to make sure the short leg is always pointing up, so cathode goes up. Now the pie hut was nice enough to make sure that the orientation was always the same, so whether you're putting it in this half of the tree, which is actually upside down, or the main part of the tree here, you always want to make sure the cathode or the short side is up. So I'm going to go ahead and put all the LEDs in, except for the star. Alright, now because I hadn't read the instructions well, I made a small mistake, but luckily I haven't soldered yet. So it's not really a mistake. Uh, the LEDs will work on either side, but it's recommended that you kind of randomize them so that you can see more LEDs on more sides. Once it's put together, it won't look as artificial. So if you look at the board here, you'll see some of them have numbers, like 9, 10, 15. What you want to do is make sure that those ones are put in on this side. The other side you'll see numbers too, like 22, and you want to put the LED through this way. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just flip some of these around, and uh, so it'll look nicer, but it would still work like this. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Everybody makes mistakes. That's why pencils have something something. Now one thing I noticed was that the Pi Hut had sent me an LED that seems to have broken in transit. And that is rather unfortunate. Now it'll still work with one LED missing, but in the spirit of the holiday season, I thought I'd steal one instead from the person that I bought one for. I'll just get him another one later. Alright, there we go. One fresh LED. So now I'm going to go ahead and solder all of the LEDs. Well, definitely not my best soldering job, but it's kind of hard with the camera here, so um, it'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and clip all these leads off. And I left the best for last, the star at the top of the Christmas tree. That's this clear LED, it's a little bit separate, but you want to make sure that you have the short side up just like the others. Also, the LED should be on the same side as these resistors, or the presents as they call them. Now this LED is a different color as you'll see later, and that's why it's clear and the other ones are red. Now in theory you could use other different color LEDs for these as long as you have the right voltage, and that would also work, but uh, this Christmas tree is going to flash red. Alright, so now we're going to solder the header onto the tree, and this will actually allow it to attach to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to go ahead and snap this in and solder it from the other side. This one's a little hard to get in because it was damaged in shipping, as I showed you earlier. As a little trick I learned, I like to use this uh, alligator clip to hold things like headers in place while I solder them. It keeps them nice and flush, but not really necessary for your project. All right, the header is all soldered. And finally, the last step. The kit comes with these little breakaway headers, which I just snipped off. And these are what are gonna be, we're gonna solder to uh, the sides of the tree, and then they'll snap into the main tree body here. And that'll finish up our soldering. Now you see on the board here where it says header, and that's the part that we'll wanna run it over. So, the short side goes over the word header like so. There we go. Then the long side sticks out the back. I want to make sure that we definitely solder these at a good 90 degree angle. So I'm going to go ahead and use my alligator clip, but again, you don't really have to do this. Then we're going to solder them from this side. Okay, that completes our soldering. Now we can take our clippers and we can go ahead and cut the, uh, the outside uh, bezel off. So you want to be careful when you do this not to cut the board itself. There are like tiny little traces in here, you know, little tiny wires that can get clipped. So just very carefully snip it with your snippers at the perforated parts. Okay, so for these last parts you actually don't have to solder it. You can just kind of snap it together. They designed it that way. Uh, you can solder it if you want to for some extra stability, but uh, it might make it easier to store it if you don't. So it's totally up to you. 
Seems pretty obvious here what has to happen, so I'm going to go ahead and snap the rest of the Christmas tree together. And there's our tree! Now again, if you want to, you can solder these, but not really necessary. I'm going to leave them off to make it easier to take apart and store for next year. Alright, I've connected the Christmas tree to my Raspberry Pi 3. It's important that the resistors, or presents as they call them, aim towards the uh, HDMI port there. So I'm going to go ahead and plug power in. And the LEDs are flashing for some reason. Shouldn't be doing that yet, but that's probably not a problem. All right, now I'm going to log into my computer and I'm going to install the tool that the Pi Hut recommends installing. Apparently this is already included on the newest versions of Raspbian, but I'm going to go ahead and install it anyways, just to be sure. All right, I'm going to create tree.py, Python file, put the example code in there and save it. Then I'm going to go ahead and run the file. And there we go. We have a nice blinky Christmas tree. Wow, that's really cool. It actually looks a lot better in person. It's kind of hard to see here. Like on the video, it looks a little bit like pink. Let's see if I can get the lighting adjusted here. Yeah, the video really does not do it justice. I'll see if I can post some photos too. Now you aren't limited to just making it blink like this. Somebody actually went and created a script that every time the hashtag Christmas is used on Twitter, it'll light up the star and make the LEDs flash. That's kind of cool. I mean, you can control these like you can anything else just using Python. Um, so you could have it, you know, maybe each one lights up 25 days up to Christmas. And then on Christmas, the final one lights up or something like the hashtag. Um, Either way, it's a fun little project if you like to solder or if you know somebody that does. Super cheap. I think it was like 15 bucks for the tree and you could use a $5 Pi Zero or you could use a Pi 3 if you have it lying around. And it's just a really neat project. And I hope you had a great time watching me solder things. And I hope you have some happy holidays.